Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, there has been a lot going on, so I apologize if I have been preoccupied, but I am not preoccupied so much that I can't do a simple video explaining to you guys the recent updates. The first update we're going to give you is that the consult. Now, I'm going to give you the latest two examples. I just did a video explaining you. The latest, well, the latest two examples, there, there are actually four consults that were just recently done where one individual was in a situation where they were accusing him of stealing something that he couldn't have stole because there was a contract between the parties. And the contract showed the parties giving an exchange. So that's not stealing. The contract shows the party they are accusing of stealing handing over money the exact the money, the exact the money, the exact amount of money the parties agreed upon. And later the person wasn't too happy and so they decided to retaliate. And it led to a criminal charge. So basically I had to help him to understand that there could be no criminal charge because there was an agreement that it's a civil matter. The same thing the police would tell you if you were to tell them somebody stole something of yours and but you had an agreement. The only problem is there wasn't a written agreement, there was a verbal agreement, but everything is on film, on camera, not the vocals, but the transaction between the parties showing the date and time, and it's already been introduced into evidence, that video. So I was able to help him to understand that there can be no liability on his part when he had an agreement and the video shows that there was an agreement. What the agreement was or was not is not a criminal matter. What the agreement was is that it's on video that there was an agreement and there was an exchange of goods, currency, one for the other. So that was one consult. The other one is a gentleman who's going through foreclosure and he's had several cases going off, uh, one even going to the appeals court and a circuit court and the other one going to the regular court. and. The arguments he was bringing up was many of the arguments you guys listen to on these intelligent individuals' videos. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't bring that junk you hear on YouTube into the courtroom. Lord have mercy. That's not how the system works. That's not how things work. So you can't do that. Okay? You can't do that. So I'm so glad we got that taken care of. Now that's the first thing. So I basically helped him to understand we had two hours and 25 minutes of that conversation explaining to the individual and he understood and he grasped what he was supposed to have said, what he should have said and how to correct the errors that have been made so as to protect himself and his property. He was also given information that even if he thinks that the judge is going in a different direction, that he can file certain things to head the judge off at the path. So that was that one. Then we had the young lady who contacted me. Now I ain't gonna do this for everybody. This one right here, this is what I did the video on. I'm not gonna do this for everybody because this is it takes too much. But we did her consult. She I can't remember all the things her consult was about because that one was three hours. And I don't do three hours I give you a guarantee of one hour and 45 minutes at least some days I have the time some days I'll give you my time other days you ain't getting it because I don't have it but this young lady had some situations that they talked to me about uh, I think there was one where there was an agreement and someone breached the agreement then she ended up telling me at the very end of the call about a situation where she had, had some plumbing done on her property and that the individual did the work but now the work was faulty the, the insurance company agreed that the work was faulty and they haven't repaired it yet it's been three years she's got children that's raw sewage in the basement look ladies and gentlemen there was a reason why during the Israelite times they had to take their excrement and bury it outside the camp because of the many diseases that can be had 
as a result of being near feces. So, yes, I know, nasty, isn't it? That's exactly what I thought. So I told her, no, 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 we're calling them now. I didn't even know. Uh, I wasn't even realizing that it was Saturday. But we called them on a Saturday and they were open. And we spoke to a young man, said no supervisors were available for us to talk to. So I told him to give us a call back and they called me back. And so I spoke with these people and I told them, how come, wait, what's going on? And so I told her all the different agencies she needed to contact to get some attention. But now um, she gave me limited power of attorney. I always do limited, never do a full power of attorney with anyone always limited. Why? Because you want that person to retain their right. They need to be able to fire you whenever they feel like it. They need to be able to say, oh no, 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 I'm not authorizing that. Okay, they need to be able to have a say-so. So it's always limited power of attorney. Anybody ever wants to appoint an attorney for you, say, yeah, under my limited power of attorney, you have my permission. No, 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 no. What you mean, no? That's my power of attorney. I distribute it how I choose. You don't get to choose my power of attorney. So I said under my limited power of attorney. You got a problem with that? Then you better state on the record that I can't do it. And then you better show me some law. Not no little stupid case, so-called opinion, but law. Other than that, you can just shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's how I talk to the court. You can't do that. You cannot talk to them the way I talk to them. Trust me. Okay, you'll be held in contempt so far and, and so fast and ain't got nothing to do with you saying, I sorry, I sorry, I apologize. That, that ain't going to work. So you take what I say when you see that it's straightforward and you tone it down. You add some salt and some pepper and some other seasoning to it to make it more palatable. Okay? Well, they're now working things out. Uh, they were sending in some consultant corporation to confirm everything because it is an insurance claim. And that woman from the consultant corporation called me up and copped an attitude. And I had to stop the conversation and say, excuse me, first of all, you will lower your voice when you talk to me. I said, I I'm not your child. And second, when you call my home, my place of business, or anything else belonging to me, you do not get to sit up here and disrespect me. I will not allow it. And I hung up on her. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, she hung up on me. Sorry. She hung up on me when I said that. So I called her back after 15 minutes. I wanted to let cooler heads prevail. I wasn't upset. I'm talking to you the same way as I was talking to her. Didn't raise my voice or anything. Because I, I was doing something on behalf of another person. So I can't come at people the way I would do it if it was my business. I have to come at it if it belongs to them. And so I called the young lady back and I said, excuse me, you hung up on me. And then you called me, raising your voice to me after I asked you to stop. So I'm going to need to speak to your supervisor. I am the supervisor. Oh, okay. Well, don't worry about it. I'll call the insurance company and I will let them know about your conduct. You have a nice day. And I hung up. She started to say something, but I still hung up. I didn't want to hear anything she had to say at that point. So I did call the insurance company, and let's just say a lot of people are involved in this now than would have been had she had done her job. Now, then we got the last one, the young lady who has literally been taking the information from my videos and Patrick Devine, and she's literally, quite literally, sorry, I'm doing some repair work on a computer in the background. I do this periodically to make sure there's no registry errors or anything like that. Um, this young lady has been accomplishing quite a few things and she doesn't realize how tremendously effective she has actually been but she's accomplished quite a few things and so she had told me uh, about three weeks ago when we had our consult that she had had no we had our consult a week and a half ago but three weeks ago is when I gave her the first advice when she called me and because um, I'm also, she's one of our clients as well for one of the organization, but she did a consult separate from that. And so I told her when she told me she had a vehicle repossessed in March and that they said they're getting ready to sell it. So I told her, like I'm telling all of you, 
if you get a vehicle repossessed or you have anybody who gets a vehicle repossessed, you must file. Pay attention. Bankruptcy, Chapter 13. Don't worry about f going through with the Chapter 13 or anything like that. But if you want to go through with it, go through with it because bankruptcy does not get reported on your credit. Filing bankruptcy does not ruin your credit. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why bankruptcy can't ruin your credit is not the fact that the bankruptcy court does not report to the bank uh, to the credit reporting bureaus that only a creditor may place a record on your credit profile related to a debt bankruptcy is not directly related to any debt because the bankruptcy court is not a creditor so it can't report a debt so when a creditor reports that you filed bankruptcy that is second and third hand information that's unlawful it's a violation of the fair credit reporting act which says only a creditor may directly report a debt an outstanding debt on your credit profile so the bankruptcy will never appear in your credit and if it does you can sue the credit reporting agencies so you don't have to be afraid of filing bankruptcy anymore that's that junk they put out there for the limp-minded people who don't understand law i hope that gave somebody an understanding so this lady's car taken she filed bankruptcy you know they ignored her wouldn't give her a car back so i said no 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 no. we're going to call them right now there's a second call i did that i don't do this all the time but there's a second call in a row that i did it and i told him i said excuse me the guy told me his name muhammad and i said muhammad I said, what gives your organization a right to ignore a court order? I said, the filing of a bankruptcy creates an automatic stay. All debt collection activities must cease. The holding of that vehicle is part of a debt collection activity. You guys are given a restraining order. You have to return that vehicle. So he told me to hold on. We held on for 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. After those 10 minutes, he came back, sir. Um, can I get your number? I didn't understand what he said. After we cleared up the confusion, because I couldn't make out what he was saying. It was, his voice was too low. He says, no, I, want, I need your number because I've ordered the release of the vehicle. And I just need to have your number so I can call you back, since she gave you power of attorney. Uh, call you back and tell you where your client can pick up her vehicle. Now, mind you, because she filed bankruptcy and she didn't have to pay any of the storage fees or the towing costs, she's not responsible for that. Ladies and gentlemen, they got upset and they damaged her vehicle. The vehicle was running and they damaged the vehicle. As a matter of fact, so much to the effect that they didn't report that there was any problem with the vehicle prior to that. Shame on them. So I told her what to do. I said... That company is bonded. I said, all you're going to do is document all of this, get a diagnostics done in the vehicle, and then you're going to sue them. And by the way, now they can't come get the vehicle because now she has an offset. All of the damage done to the vehicle, all she's got to do is put together her receipts. She doesn't know a dime. Shame on him. But she went and she filed papers with the Internal Revenue Service while the car was repoed. And the Internal Revenue Service sent her five weeks later a check. Over $30,000, ladies and gentlemen, which she has just negotiated. So, that's what the consults do. So, if you go to the website, ladies and gentlemen, you will notice from now on, underneath, underneath, underneath this video and all the other videos subsequent, I mean, after this, subsequent to this video, you will notice one thing. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't care about no stupid copyrights. I want uh, settings, so you will notice one thing, and this is for your benefit. I have a meeting that I have to get into, so we'll talk to you guys about the other things dealing with the spot trading, which is going all right. We'll talk to you guys about that shortly, but this is the channel uploads. Underneath the video, ladies and gentlemen, there's a new link, payment link, we're using a different company because they've been charging too much, the previous company. So we're using GoDaddy. GoDaddy. Go, GoDaddy. Anyway, uh, but there are new links underneath the videos for the consults.
Okay, I don't care about the donations. And I don't ask you guys for donations. You never heard me. But people ask for me to put that there, so it's there. Okay, but I put that information up about the consults because some people are finding benefit in it. As a matter of fact, the last couple of consults, the people have, well, every single one of them, the people have said they've gotten their money's worth. The reason for that is because they understand what the consult is. So there is a video online that talks about the consult. The instructions are you are to send an email to a particular email address that's listed directly underneath this video. While you send an email to that email address, you'll get a response telling you all the details of what you need to do. And all you need to do is follow those instructions to the letter. Now it did say Skype, but in the future it will say Telegram. We'll start doing the meetings over Telegram. So all you have to do is download and get yourself a Telegram account. And I will set up a Telegram meeting with you where we will record the screen. You'll see everything, unlike most people in their consults, Ladies and gentlemen, I provide, as a service, a recording of the entire consult. And I also show you where I'm getting all the information from. So everything I say is backed up. Now, there have been people who misunderstood this. They thought that a consult was a, I'm supposed to teach them something. A consult is not me teaching you something. Will I show you how to do certain things and how to accomplish certain things? Most certainly. Within reason. But I'm not going to tutor or do a class where I'm teaching you from scratch how to do something or doing documents for you. From time to time, I do documents for people, but that's when I feel like it, not when somebody asks me to. Okay, so don't ask. and <laughs> Definitely, I won't tell. Okay, so that is the situation with the consults. Um, this, one, this young lady, not woman, young lady, because she was able to accomplish certain things on her own, by just taking what I've done on video and applying it and adding it to, I'll tell you straight up, Patrick Devine. Now, here's the thing. There's always been this thing about people saying that I'm getting information from Patrick Devine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to upload documents from Patrick Devine. I've never looked at them. I've never looked at a single Patrick Devine document. And if I have noticed a single Patrick Devine document, I guarantee I didn't get anything from it. I don't take things from other people's documents. That's theirs. And Patrick Devine, I've listened to Patrick Devine, but I couldn't continue to listen to Patrick Devine. Okay, because his videos were <laughs> just as long as mine. So, I didn't know Patrick. I did not follow anything Patrick did. The Our style money order, you heard me say our style money order. The post office had their style, I created ours. However, Patrick Devine did a money order two years before I even introduced my money order. But I didn't get anything from Patrick Devine. I came up with the money order right there on video. And those who saw my video saw that I said, wait, hold on a minute. This A for V, and that's a check. And so I designed the money order by showing people the elements of a check. So with that being stated, for those people out there who presume anything other what you don't understand is none of this stuff is new. There is nothing new under the sun. I'm not doing anything that hasn't been done before. I am not talking about anything that hasn't been talked about before. That's why I tell people, go and check and see if what I'm saying is accurate. So, she said she combined what I said with Patrick Devine and she was able to perfect the process. So I told her since she was able to do that and she followed instructions, I gave her an offer to become part of SACCOM. No, 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 no. This was specific to her, not to the rest of you. We're not having any openings right now. Okay? We're definitely not having any openings right now. There are several things going on right now that we can't be bringing on any other people. She is unique. Her situation is unique. Got it? All right. Ladies and gentlemen. I have to go because there's a meeting as you see all these little pop-ups that meeting right there that just got started I have to go to that meeting so I'm gonna have to let you guys go hey but thank you for letting me take up your time and thank you for understanding what a consult with Eon is all about have a good day everyone